I just want to extend my welcome to all of you, uh, newcomers and to the old ones, maybe the new ones who are visiting our um, YouTube channel. We just want to thank you and welcome you. May God uh, help you so that you find this message really of use in your life because that is our goal so that you are lifted up spiritually and you feel that it was worth listening to the message of God. May God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us all we need to be victorious in spiritual battle in which all your children are engaged. Help us rely on you and not on our own abilities. Help us to find all we need in you, in the power of your might, Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity. You come to us in stillness, and out of silence you speak your word. Still our racing hearts and minds hold and restless and disraised thoughts. Help us now to center our lives on you. Be with us, Father. Be with us, Lord. Give us hope, Lord. For we know who we are fighting. We are fighting with the devil. We are fighting with Satan. We are fighting with evil spirits. Help us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'll call my brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Good morning and praise the Lord for today. Uh, this is one of my favourite verses and uh, I know a lot of people say this every day before they um, wake up and go about their day. It's a, it's a really powerful one for the body of Christ. And I uh, can't wait to hear Johnson's sermon. But uh, as he mentioned, it's from Ephesians verse 6, 10 to 20. And it's about the armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your right waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and put on the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always re keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that when I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Powerful, eh? All right, we'll get Johnson back here. I can't wait to hear what he's got to say, as I previously mentioned. Johnson. I do welcome you again. And I want to just let you know that uh, as Christians, Sometimes we don't know the world we are living in. The world we are living in at the present moment is always fighting, especially the Christians, the believers. 
those who believe in God. So what does that mean? We are at war with evil spirits. So my theme tonight, or my theme this morning, is we are at war. We are at war. In the Christian life, we battle against rulers and authorities, according to the Bible. The powerful evil forces of fallen angels, headed by Satan, who is a vicious fighter. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. To withstand the attacks, we must depend on God's strength and use every piece of his armor. Paul was not only giving this counsel to the church, the body of Christ, but to all individuals within the church. So the whole body needs to be armed. You need to be prepared for the battle. As you battle against the powers of this dark world, Fight in the strength of the church whose power comes from the Holy Spirit. Where, what can your church do to be a Christian armory? If you are a Christian, you are in a battle. That's the first thing. If you are a Christian, you are in a battle. And upon this battle depends the joy of your heart, the happiness of your marriage, and the welfare of your children, the security of your home, and the influence of your life. Who are you? You are involved in spiritual warfare. You are involved in a battle. But the problem is many Christians, perhaps most, do not even realize it. They don't. Men of God's soldiers are sleeping in the barracks when they ought to be on the battlefield. The reason why many Christians are losing their battle with the devil day by day is because they are not even showing up for the war. In fact, I believe there are a lot of Christians who do not even realize that there is a war going on. They don't even know that there is a war going on. I'm afraid that there are a lot of Christians who don't realize who their enemy is in the first place. They don't realize there is a war going on. They don't understand that every day they are in a fight of their spiritual life. Someone has said, much of the church warfare today is fought by blinded, folded soldiers. Who cannot see the forces range against them? Who are buffeted by invisible openings and respond by striking one another? Douglas MacArthur, one of the, our greatest generals, once said, In war there is no substitute for victory. Well, that statement is doubly true for a spiritual warfare. We find ourselves as children of God. If you are a Christian, if you want to listen to this next statement, in your war, God wants you to be victorious, and not to lose the war. Victory is ours. That is what God wants us to be. It is high time that many Christians quit blowing the retreat and begin sounding the charge. There are too many Christians who are letting the devil to take to them, and when they ought to be taking it to the devil. We need to be charging. Well, I believe it's high time that many Christians go off the defense and went on the offensive. Two men Christians are leaping into heaven as defeated saints when they need to be leaping into heaven as victorious soldiers. This is war. I want to share with you how to prepare yourself a battle on a daily basis so that you can win your spiritual war. Now, this war is unlike any other war fought in history because it is spiritual. It is spiritual. In verse 12, tells us, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what we are fighting with. You see, the war that I'm speaking of is going on at this very moment here in this building. You may not be able to see the bullets whizzing over your ears or the bombs exploding over your head, but the war is really just the same. It's being fought in your home. That's why Christian marriages are falling apart at a record rate. And why Christian children are rebelling against the authority of their parents. It's going on in your head. 
That's why Christians are falling prey to the trap of pornography and adultery. It is going on in your heart. That is why all of us are better to every day to do what is right instead of doing what is wrong. But just because this war is invisible does not mean that it is not real. If you don't believe there is a war going on, just read your newspaper and you will see the results of this war in things such as murder, rape, prostitution, robbery, terrorism, drug addiction, child molestation. These are the rotten eggs that are hated by this terrible war. You can see that there is war going on. Notice that Paul says in verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Every Christian in this world, every Christian has to fight. There are no defamations, no exemptions, no conscientious objections in God's army. If you are a Christian, you better get ready to rumble. You are in the army. You are in God's army. March on, Christian soldiers. Let me tell you something. When you give your heart to Jesus, you don't just get into a spot. You are getting into a fight. The moment you say, I want, I'm, I'm now a Christian, I've surrendered my life, you are saying, I'm now going into a fight. It's not a sport. God not only puts salvation in your heart, he puts a sword in your hand, and that is the word of God. The one that you used to fight with. When Paul came to the end of his life, he said, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, I have fought the good fight. He exhorted his son Timothy in 1 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, to fight the good fight of faith. So we are in a fight. I say again, the problem is, we have got two men soldiers sleeping in the barracks. And many Christians surrender, even without firing a shot. Without even doing anything. As a matter of fact, there are some of you sitting here right now, wondering what I'm talking about. Because you never feel like you are in a war. And you never even pray like you are in a war. The reason why many of you don't feel like you are in a war is because you have laid your weapons down and you have basically gone the way of the world. You are following the world. The reason why you and I and the devil get along so well is because you are traveling in the same direction. We don't fight with our hands in our pockets. No, you don't move like this. Hands in the pocket when you are fighting the spiritual war. No. You don't look like you are going to the parliament. You need to show that you are fighting. Well, I want to tell you, every one of you, if you are a Christian, you are in the war. You may be a deserter, you may be absent without official leave, but you are in the war. You cannot start with the fence in this war. You cannot be neutral. You are either on one side or the other. C.S. Lewis once said, there is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch, every split second claimed by God and counter claimed by Satan. So at every waking moment, you had better be on your guard because there is war that's going on. Our world is still filled with all kinds of fouls and dangers. We need the words of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the power of Christ among us and within us to stand the forces that would betray us. Forces of dissension, forces of hatred, forces of envy, forces of anger, forces of illness and death, forces of depression, forces of guilt and shame, forces of oppression. All these are coming towards us. These are some, there are some requisites for military success which are more important in order to win a battle. First of all, they must be moral. Fighting force must be united and by will to win a sense of cause worth dying for. Why am I fighting? What about if I'm going to die? Is it worth for me to die for this fight? Secondly, there must be strength. The soldiers must have adequate training and must be well equipped to do the job. Which means it is the duty of pastors to train their Christian members as soldiers of Jesus Christ so that they know that is something that is required for them. Thirdly, there must be an adequate source of supply. Lifelines must be kept open so that those at the front line receive all they need to win. So in order to prevail, you must have a knowledge of the enemy. Do you know your enemy? The greater the knowledge of the enemy, the greater the potential for victory. Because you know your enemy. Now, they, we are told here who are our enemies. In verse 11, it says, 
put the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wheels of the devil. Now I want you to be very careful here. Because as I talk the devil, I want you to avoid the two extremes you might have in your attitude toward the one called Satan. On the one hand, many people ignore the devil. Some even make fun of him. They think of the devil as some kind of mythical figure. Well, I want to say it right up front. I am not ashamed to tell you I believe in a personal devil just as much as I believe in a personal God. But we also need to avoid the other extremes of being ob obsessed with the devil. I'm always one of Christians who see a demon under every rock and a devil behind every tree. You are behinding every one of them in the name of Jesus. No, we, just go, we don't just walk binding everything. No, it's not like that. But we need to know who he is. We are told in verse 12 that our battle is against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So that tells me that Satan is a spiritual being and that ought to be to tell you that not everything spiritual is necessarily good. But it should surprise you that our fight is spiritual because our fall is spiritual. Our enemy is spiritual. You see, you can't fight Satan on a natural plan. You have got to fight him on a supernatural plan. You are not going to win a war against Satan by sheer willpower. He quakes at the sight of the breastplate of righteousness. He quivers before the shield of faith. He quails before the sword of the spirit. But those are the only weapons that he fears. And those are the only weapons that will took, that will work because he's spiritual enemy. He is not an enemy to be terrified with. We go on to find that our war is against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. I want to say, on the other hand, don't underestimate the power of the devil. Don't ever think you can handle on him on your own because you can't. By yourself, in your flesh, you will overpower you every time. But we are also told in verse 11 that we are to stand against the wheels of the devil. Now the word wheels is a very interesting Greek word. It gives us the English word method. So it literally means deceit or trickery. The Living Bible translates this way. Watch out for the tricks of Satan. Satan is the master of deception. He knows how to trick you. He knows how to deceive you. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Think about it. If you could see the devil in bold form, it would shock you how attractive you would look. He is not the devil who picture with the horns, with all these, 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 these things. It would even shock you how gracious and kind you could seem to be. You would never know that he is the most wicked force in the universe. I want you to understand this devil is interested in darkness and wickedness. We are so fond of saying that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Well, I think we ought also to add that as a reminder to this. Satan hates you and has a wicked plan for your life. <laughs> you mark this down. The devil is doing everything he can right now to either take you to hell or you are going to heaven to make your trip miserable as you are going to heaven. God wants you to be happy and holy. Satan wants you to be depressed and dirty. If you are not saved, you will do everything he can to make you sure you go to hell. And if you are saved, you will do everything he can to make you sin and cause you to lose the joy of your salvation. As I talk about the devil, I realize that many of us could be intimidated because he's powerful. But that's why we need to remember the last point. Paul says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. Literally what the verse says is this, put on the whole armor of God and keep it on. Not taking it off. Keep it on. There are no fallows. There are no trace truces. There are no leaves of absence. There are no ceasefires in this war. You are a soldier, you are a soldier, 24-7.
That's who you are. You have got to keep your armor on and you have got to keep your on guard. You can never relax. You can never let your guard on down because you are just sure as you do. Satan will suck a punch on you. He will fight you. So you need to keep your eyes fixed. Otherwise, you will give a punch. He will hit you at your weakest moment when you least expect. That's what the devil does. So I am admitting to you, Satan is dangerous. The devil is deadly. Old Lucifer is destructive. The wicked force is deceptive. But listen to me careful. He is not invincible. Mm. Only God is. Mm. That's one thing I want to let you know. Well, let me give you some good news. Satan is not omnipotent. Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is not omniscient. But God is all free. Satan is not sovereign, but God is. But the other than those qualifications is powerful for. But greater is he who is in you, but the one who is in the world. You see, you have an advantage over Satan. It is the arm of God. Why? Because he's in you. God is in you. Greater is he who is in you than the one who is in the world. Well, God has given us armor guaranteed to repulse the most powerful missiles, the strongest bombs, the mightiest torpedoes that Satan can fire at us. No wonder James 4 verse 7 says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Did you know that there's no single verse in the Bible that tells us that we are to run from the devil? <laughs> no single verse which says run away from the devil. It says resist. Resist the devil. So the Bible says we are to flee temptation, but not the devil. The Bible says we are to flee sin, but the Bible never says we are to flee from the devil. The Bible says we are to resist the devil and you will flee from us. That's what the Bible says. That's why the Bible calls us to stand firm. Stand firm. Not to run away, but to stand firm. We are in a war. We have got to get ready to rumble and I want to begin thinking not about the devil can do to us, but what can we do to him? We are going to find out that because of the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, because of the awesome power of the Holy Spirit, and because of the arm of God, we can win the war. We can win the war. We can win the war. Victory comes by attacking, by holding fast to the faith while under attack. In so doing, Christ, like Christ, will conquer the devil. As long as we stand in the name of Jesus Christ, we will defeat the devil. We are on the side of winning. So I'm calling you brothers and sisters to say, we are in war. We are at war right now. You are at war in your own home. You are at war every time. So don't sleep. Be vigilant. Be a soldier of Jesus Christ. May God help you as you think upon these words that we are at war. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Paul didn't let the fact that he was physically in chains stop him from saving you. We have many chains of different kind. We pray that whatever we see as our chains, our limitations, our obstacles, our weakness, we we'll know you are leading through the trials of our lives. And that equipped with your armor, we will work together for you. We are there for you, Father, and we win the war because you are always with us. Might and most powerful God, we praise you that not only are you our strength, but you enable us to be stronger together. Thank you that you don't want us to stand alone. Together with you, with each other, we can do greater things in our service. We can be the people you want us to be. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this opportunity that we are able to stand against the devil. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have fully equipped us to overcome the world and the flesh and the devil with such wonderful pieces of spiritual armor. Thank you for the shield of faith with which we are able to extinguish all the flaming arrows and fierce darts of the evil one. Help us to stand fast on the promises of God to keep my eyes, our eyes through him. But that is in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
we may live by grace through faith. Father, we pray that we live by faith and not by sight to eternal praise and glory. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's again time always to thank God. After hearing the word of God, after hearing what God is saying to us, it's time to say thank you. It's time to give your thanksgiving. It's time to just think about it. The things you have encountered in your life, even this week, how many things have you encountered where you feel that you were sometimes even becoming powerless, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, you manage to go through. You manage to sail through. So you need to say, thank you, Lord. Let us pray for the offerings. Heavenly Father, we pray for this offering, Lord Jesus Christ, that has been brought by your children, wherever they are, in different places, in their homes. Father, we pray that they are just saying, thank you, Lord. May you bless them, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are a God of wonders. May you continue, Lord, to bless your children. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I am pray. Amen. Amen. Let us receive grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for everything. Lord, I know that if I trust, we trust, you protect us. You give us whatever we need to keep us safe and to keep us fighting on your side. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Amen.